<clears throat> Good day folks, this is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Uh, we just moved, uh, what was it, 60, 69 bulls. We had to take them out of the flurd. The sheep are lambing pretty earnestly now and the sheep can't keep up. In other words, when you got a bunch of baby lambs, you got to keep these cows or these bulls moving. They're eating a lot of forage and uh, they're young growing bulls. These are anywhere from seven months old all the way up to two years of age and uh they've still got their winter hair coats on um boy there's one there that doesn't have much hair left he's got rid of almost all of it but look what they're turned into folks this is sheep pasture these are some of our sheep paddocks and uh, we don't normally run cattle through here but maybe once a year uh, but now with the bulls we needed a place to put them and what I wanted to point out was everybody talks about, well, if you got sheep, you can't grow red clover or any type of clover because the sheep will graze it out of your field. Well, this uh, shows otherwise. It doesn't happen that way if you move your animals. So we've got really good clover. And this has uh, been sheep for, I don't know, close to 20 years and uh it's just thick it's just thick in here it's just unbelievable the amount of forage in here and this is kind of a poor old ridge right here this this had broom sedge on it you can still see remnants of the broom sedge the brown grass there but it's got a lot of other good stuff on it and the bulls right now are just they're traveling seeing how far this paddock goes and um, we're giving them I think there's six acres. No, there's not. There's a. This is paddock number twenty. There's a four acres. There's four acres in this paddock, and so they'll be on here all day. And then tomorrow we're gonna move them, and uh, I'm gonna actually be adding a few more bowls in here from one of my producers that uh, he runs our stock. Started a herd, and uh, with our bowls and our heifers, and. He's really built a beautiful, beautiful, I said flock. <laughs> he started his herd with our genetics. And now he's got some really nice young bulls. And so I'm going to be adding some of those to our bull herd because we've got so much demand for these bulls. I can't, I can't keep up with the demand. But I've got uh, another guy that's got the same stock. And uh, so we're going to be adding those in with these. But anyway, uh, we're going to keep moving these bulls. Uh, this is uh, the May 3rd. They'll go back into the cow herd in uh, July, July 1st. But before they do, <clears throat> we'll go through here and band them, uh, the ones that need to be banded. A lot of these are going to be steers. And uh, somebody said, well, why don't you, uh, you know, why would you turn in for your bulls into your cow herd? Well, we don't. We band them. <laughs> so what we call is an inferior bull one that uh doesn't look like a bull doesn't slick off or for whatever reason just didn't grow out just right those are going to be steers folks there are some beautiful bulls in here man they're, they're starting to look like men look at this one coming by this right here now <clears throat> we call that a scur bull he's got a little scur on his head uh, probably never been any more than that button where a horn would grow and uh, scurs don't bother me a bit they do not throw horns on your offspring but look at that boy he's almost slick these are these are fescue these are kentucky 31 fescue clover grown bulls we don't feed our bulls any grain they've never had a bite of grain so when you turn them into your cows they're not gonna what they call bull melt and boy, I've had my share of those. You bring them in there and they're looking for a feed sack. Back before I got into South Poles, that's the way everybody taught me to do it. Is you got to feed your bull grain to make them put on weight. Well, that's ridiculous. you got to feed a bull grain to get him back in shape to breed. You don't have something that's going to make you any money at all. And worse than that, the offspring of him is going to be just like him. You've got to feed them grain. Folks, with today's cattle prices, we're, I mean, there's people going bankrupt because they're, 
you know, the, the market's just terrible right now, but part of that that would help offset your, your uh, liability there is having animals that can perform on grass. And somebody said, well, what are you going to do when you, when you got to butcher one of these? You can't get them into the, the market. We can get them in the market. We're not dealing with Tyson or, or you know, IBP or those big packers. You know, we're using small mom and pop shops, and you can still get animals processed. I think this whole pandemic thing has really exposed the vulnerability of our of our food supply here in the United States. Anytime you concentrate all these animals or even vegetables to four or five major places, and then those workers in those plants get sick and they can't go to work anymore. You know, you can't blame the workers if their buddies are all get you know getting sick and you don't want to go into that environment well, what do you do well you need you need more plants you need you need more people out on the land you need more small arbiters or you know locker plants processing animals to feed their communities we don't need great big ones we need more small ones i mean it's just to me it's something that we need to change and boy if people aren't woke up by now and you go in your meat section there's no meat in there I don't know what is going to wake them up. You all vote with your dollar, your grocery dollar. Go to your state reps and tell them we need more locker plants. People are raising these healthy animals out on the land. They need a place to bring them in and have them processed. And I think the biggest travesty, one of the largest travesties of this is folks being, they've raised all these animals and they got to euthanize them because they can't get them processed. That's just silly and people are hungry. So you're burying meat in the ground or the crops are going stagnant because there's nobody out there that can pick them and process them. We've got this massive scale of food production centered in about five people's hands. It wasn't designed that way. This is the way it was designed. Healthy food comes from healthy soil, healthy plants, and healthy animals. Period. Don't make it any more complicated than that. And then you've got young men like that over there, Ben and Isaac. They're over there digging up plants, ID and stuff. There's our future right there. Those young guys, you can say anything you want about this next generation. I'm telling you what, there are some good ones out there. I am so enthralled and happy and enthusiastic about the next generation based on those two individuals right up there. Because I know there's more of them just like them. This silly bull's got all this grass, and he found him a, a plastic bottle that blew over here from the road, and he's chewing on it. I heard, you goofy thing. I'm going to go ahead and get it from him before he eats it. Let loose of that. I think he's going to eat. Drop it. Drop it, drop it, drop it. <laughs> Look at that. Folks, you got plastic laying around. Get rid of it. There. It's not good. It's not good for animals to eat that stuff. It's not organic. It doesn't break down in their gut. So if you see a plastic bottle from the road that blew over in your pasture, get rid of it. Don't leave it laying out there because your animals will eat it. But this is this is heartwarming to me. This is our lifetime lease farm. And uh we call this Marshall's Pond Paddock, and that's because this little pond up here, there was an old guy who lived around here, his name was Marshall Colley, and uh, we nicknamed that pond after Marshall. It's called Marshall's Pond Paddock. But uh, this is solid broom sedge when I leased this farm in two, uh, 1999. Solid broom sedge. And today, the bulls are pretty darn happy in here. So this has had, uh, we had the flirted, the flirt came through here um, about uh, three weeks ago. That's how fast this grass is growing back, folks. Now, we have had ample rain. Uh, yesterday hit 85 degrees. Today, the high is going to be 70. So we're having really good growing conditions. Just super, super good moisture. And the animals are responding. I couldn't believe how much weight these bulls have put on in the last three weeks. I bet they're chunking on four pounds a day. I mean, they, they they came through the winter. We had a hard winter, and uh, they made it through it just fine. And, and uh, 
they're, they're, they're looking a whole lot better now. They'll look a lot better here in about three weeks when all this winter hair coat comes off of them. But, you know, I'd, I'd rather have the winter hair coat on than not have a winter hair coat, especially when it's 10 below zero. And I get a lot of people asking about well, these cattle work up in Wisconsin, you know, Michigan, uh, northern Minnesota. I, I wouldn't bring south poles up there. It's just too cold. They're not designed for that. Uh, th these are more moderate temperature. I mean, maybe the lower part of Minnesota you'd be fine. And I've got some bulls in Minnesota that are doing okay. But when I, when I picked those bulls out, I made sure they could grow hair, like this one right here. He, he's lost a lot of his hair, but <clears throat> here's another young, this bull here we just put in. He's uh, less than a year old. Yeah, he's he's uh, seven months. That bull's got some hair. You could you could probably take that bull to Minnesota and he'd be fine. Matter of fact, there's bulls in Minnesota doing just fine, but they got to be able to grow hair. Um, there's one right here, 882. He's more fine fine skinned. You know, he he doesn't have the the longer hair on him. I don't know if I'd bring that bull out of the state of Missouri. So they, they've got to be able to grow hair. But with that, uh, the bulls are telling me that they're happy in here, and we're happy that we got them in here. They're going to have plenty to eat, and we'll be moving them out of here tomorrow. And with that, I'm going to be signing off for you all new to the channel. On the way out, hit that subscribe button, and uh, we're going to be following through the spring flush here as we go forward. Everyone have a good one.